Product companies can be viewed from an ownership perspective. Basically, they own everything. Patents, intellectual property for the algorithms, designs. They own all the processes for getting a particular line of code to the end user. As we saw that the code can reach the end user in multiple formats. And product companies own everything. And they ensure that that code reaches the end user. But they also own why that line of code was written. And those decisions come from the management of a product company. So from an external perspective, you can assume that all the decisions are being owned by a single leadership group. And that's what defines the product company. So for the end user, actually it doesn't matter who owns that decision making process. But from an engineering perspective, it makes a lot of difference. In later parts of this course, we will be taking a look at certain scenarios where this communication plays a huge role. And as an engineer, you need to understand the role of communication in the quality of the deliverable. And that's where product companies are different from the other kinds of companies based on the kind of function they perform. And that's why this has been brought up into this course as an umbrella for that discussion as to how functioning of companies and organizations has an impact on the kind of software that can be delivered. From an engineering perspective, you can assume that at the end of the day, a product is actually a code base. And that makes sense. A complete ownership of the code base is what it boils down to in reality. All the decisions that are being made by the management, all the other channels of reaching out to the customers, everything boils down to a single code base. And as a programmer, maintaining the health of that code base is an integral part of software engineering. But that doesn't mean that is the only part of software engineering that is worth understanding. As you dive deeper, you will realize that the importance of a code base slightly diminishes with every step you go away from the customer. As we saw on multiple occasions already in this course, that code is not what really reaches the end user. It is a particular solution. And confusing yourself as the only most important person in the entire chain of delivering the software to the end user is what makes a lot of software engineers redundant because they purely focus on the language or the syntax or the nitty gritties of coding. They forget to realize that software is a business and coding is a part of it. Coding makes certain things realized in reality and it is very tangible because you see those many millions lines of code in front of you and you feel that that's all that really matters, but that is not the case. So don't fall into the trap of your own code. Realize that it is part of a solution and not the complete solution itself. So from an end user's perspective, product companies are the ones who are directly solving their problem. So whatever issues they see in a product, they directly reach out to the company selling them the product. But that is an extremely simplified view of the distribution system. But in this course, you can stick with that assumption that there is a direct link between the software the end user is experiencing and the company that is providing it. There are no intermediaries. Of course, with business use cases, things get far more complicated, but that doesn't matter to you as an engineer. What you need to focus on is the ownership aspect of things, that your actions are going to reach the customer directly. Whatever other components get involved in the ecosystem are also part of your company itself and you should be able to reach them whenever necessary. Actually, you should be aware of them even before it becomes necessary. To be a good engineer, you need to understand the entire journey of software from the moment you start designing it till the time the end user actually uses it. And that is the whole point of the software development lifecycle being considered as a baseline for this course instead of explaining it in terms of organizations, hierarchies, roles, designations, etc. 
it is the software development life cycle that you need to understand the rest are just permutations of responsibilities roles and organizational structures